Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another fun episode of Demo Days. Hey, get rid of that. All right, cool, cool, cool. If this is your first time here, definitely say hi in the chat. Let everyone know where you're watching from today. If you've been following us closely, we recently introduced new beta features within GitHub issues, all to bring your planning and tracking efforts much closer to the actual work on your code. Uh, today, I've got Matthew Butler, Senior Product Manager, to demo some of these new capabilities and talk about how they help you gain visibility while adapting your changing demands. Matt? Hey, thanks, AJ. So hi, everyone. My name's Matt. I'm a product manager here at GitHub, um, and I'm also joined today by Eric, who's going to be helping us out in the chat. So as a bit of an introduction about me, uh, I've been working in the developer experience space now for around the last 10 years. I uh, previously co-founded a project management company. So it's a really big interest to me in how teams can successfully plan and track their work while still having a great developer experience. Um, and in my opinion, having that great developer experience also really helps companies in terms of getting the right velocity and hitting the right objectives and the right outcomes that they're really looking for. And in order to enable that to happen, staying close to the code in GitHub is, in my opinion, one of the best ways that you can do that. So today I'm going to show you a bit around the new projects um, and talk about how we can use those for different situations. So if you haven't signed up yet, um, make sure you check out um, our page here at github.com slash features slash issues, um, where you can sign up um, and request access um, for any of your accounts into the beta. We have been uh, working our way through the backlog there, but we are still quite early in the private beta. We're working hard to open this up to as many people as possible um, as quickly as we can. So please bear with us there, but hopefully this will be a good sneak peek for you all today uh, at what is in store for us there. And one of the questions that a lot of teams kind of ask me uh, is around kind of like why GitHub issues? Like why use GitHub issues for planning and tracking? And for me, we all need a way to be able to plan our work. Uh, we need to track issues and we need to talk about the things that we build. At GitHub, our universal answer to this is GitHub issues. So GitHub issue tracking is special because it's so focused on simplicity. It's really focused on being flexible and they're just so powerful whilst being both of those things. So with GitHub issues, you can express ideas with GitHub flavored markdown you can assign and mention contributors. You can react with emoji. You can clarify things with attachments and videos. Um, and we recently actually like increased the size of videos you can add and added support for additional file types. So it's easier than ever to be able to make things as clear as possible within issues. Um, and also you're really connected to the code base. So you can easily reference things like commits, pull requests and releases. And all that while keeping the core of simplicity. So with that being said, let me just dive right into a demo today. So there's a bunch of different things that I want to take you through for the new projects. Um, but let's have a look right here at one that we put together earlier. So this is essentially one of the new projects uh, and what it will look like once you're starting to populate it with some different issues. So one of the things you'll notice here is that we have been heavily inspired by the spreadsheet. Um, and this was something that we found from talking to lots of different teams and whatever tracking solution they were using, and you know, <laughs> there's quite a few on the market, uh, whichever one they were using, they kept ending up in a spreadsheet. And what they found was they really valued the simplicity of the spreadsheet and it really valued how customizable it was. But when we drilled into kind of where does that fall down? Like, why isn't everyone just using spreadsheets for this? The answer was because they became stout really quickly. So whilst that initial act of actually building out and creating the spreadsheet was quite enjoyable for a lot of teams, going in every day and updating cells to reflect the source of truth um, <laughs> wasn't a job that anybody on the team wanted to actually do. And so what we're hoping here is that by bringing that power and flexibility of a spreadsheet, and injecting it with the context of GitHub issues and keeping things up to date, um, we'll be able to give a fantastic uh, experience for, for, for software teams. 
And so this should feel quite similar. Like if you've used Excel or you use Google Sheets, you know, I can, can do things here a bit. I can zoom up, I can zoom down. Um, let me just make sure this is a good size. So if, if I zoom in a little bit, um, how's that? Would that be a little bit of better zoom in? Excellent. Okay. Um, so I can, I can kind of reorder these rows. So obviously things like prioritization is great there. Um, I can make sure everything is, is nicely prioritized. We have our top items at the, the top here. I can also do the same with the columns. I can move those around. Uh, I can sort the columns here. So I can kind of slice and dice the data in different ways. Um, and I can also customize this based on the data we want to see. So for example, um, we've got all this built in metadata to GitHub. So we have milestones, we have repositories, we have assignees. Um, we already have assignees showing here. Um, so I could, for example, add in milestone. And it starts to become really customizable for what the team are after. And then where it becomes really exciting is when we start to think about the custom data that's unique to our teams. So I can actually come in here and I can just create new fields with different types, but just to keep this first one simple, one that I added in earlier, um, for example, you could add in something like team and then use this as a single select and just kind of simply kind of have your different options in here. So as we start to kind of bring this in, we can start to see like the different powers of the spreadsheet style interface. Another really good one is status. This is actually something that we are going to uh, start including by default into all new projects. And the status field is a little bit special because what that lets us do is actually kind of flip from this table view into a board view. So if I just head up here and hit the board, uh, we just immediately take that exact same data, but we start viewing it as a task board. And one of the things I want to highlight as we kind of make that switch is just how fast that is, because we have spent a lot of time trying to make this as fast as possible. Uh, we really want this to feel fast, not just in terms of how things load, but also in terms of the usability. So we have great support for things like keyboard, then net navigation. This should feel kind of really like a spreadsheet in terms of that. Uh, but we also have built our new command palette. Um, which is a free, probably my favorite feature uh, that I use multiple times a day. And this just lets me kind of execute all of the actions that I can do in the UI, but just by typing the command. So as an example there, um, group by is one of the new things that we've added in. So if I take group by and then pick one of the entries there, we can actually start to slice and dice uh, this screen by those entries. And then this makes it really easy for me to kind of like drag and drop. And when I do so, it will update the value of the en entry there. So just really nice ways that you can start to build up a set of issues, a set of PRs, and just kind of really plan and kind of be really confident that you've got all the context you need and that you're working on the most important stuff to, uh, to, to you and your team. So one of the keys here, kind of as we're showing these and as we're building these different, different bits of functionality out is that we're trying to think of primitives here. So we're trying to build in different plan and tracking primitives and enable you to put them together in your own way that really fits the flow that makes sense to your team. So you can see the data that you want to see, you can see it in the way that you want to see it, and you can change that depending on the activity that you're currently doing. So where something like a grouped by table view might be fantastic for, uh, for planning an upcoming iteration, something like the board layout might be perfect for zooming in and focusing on what you want to achieve over the next week. But to talk a bit more about that, I'm actually going to switch over to this other project here where I want to talk a bit about how you can set these up for different, um, different ways of working. So I want to talk about three different ways that teams can work today. The first, I'm going to start with the most simple one. Um, and this is something that we do a lot at GitHub, which is working in Kanban. So for me, Kanban is just all about flow. It's all about how can we have 
a system where work flows through it, it's pulled in in a just-in-time manner, um, and teams can really easily come in, see what's important, and make those trade-off decisions when they're deciding what to work on next and how they want to organize that backlog. So starting here with a reasonably lean backlog, you know, we just have 19 items in this one. One of the things we can do is we can look in and we can customize our status column. So we've got this flow here of backlog, in progress, code review, and done. So again, that's keeping it quite simple. But of course, you can add in something else here. Um, if, for example, you have a merge step, um, you could just come in here and you could create a new option um, for merged. And then kind of like it's as simple as that to be able to reflect that within the project. So let's say that something else we want to do here is to start communicating priority. So we already have things like we've got, you know, the number of items in the backlog here, but maybe as a team, we've found that uh, being able to be really explicit around things that are like urgent is really important to us. And maybe we've missed some things in the past and we wanna make sure that we don't miss things in the future. So one way that we could do that is to come in here, we're gonna create a new custom field. We're gonna call it priority. We're going to make it a single select and then let's set some options here so let's do the volcano for urgent and then do a mountain for high we have a theme there um, maybe like a thinking face medium um and then we can just go and we can chill out on the beach for things that are low priority and then if i just hit save that column just pops in here and i can come in and i can start to populate that so maybe let's just pick a couple of the items here and i'm just going to set those to be urgent and high just to help us kind of understand what's most important for us to work on Maybe there's some things down here at the bottom of the backlog that are just low priority. So we'll leave them down like that. And then one of the really kind of key things when we think about Kanban is, is kind of that board, board layout. So I think when you say Kanban to a team, um, or, to a, <laughs> or at least when you say Kanban to a PM, um, what they're gonna think of is that task board. So let me switch over here and just, uh, quickly switch over with the command palette and we can see um, our task board here and we have that layout that we just built. So we just added merged in. I'm actually going to drag this over. I'm going to put that before done because that makes more sense from a flow perspective. Um, and now as a team, we have this nice view where we can see, hey, here's everything in our backlog that's prioritized. We've got a couple of items here that um, are actually in this no status column. And what that means if I switch back to the table, uh, that's these two items here. So as you can see, they actually have a null value here. So the way that we communicate that in on the board view is to essentially have them in that no, um, in this no status column here. And that's kind of like a to be triage, you can think of that as. You can think of that as like, here's a queue of work that is waiting for some input. Um, should that go into the backlog? Should that go into in, in progress? And then one of the things we can do here is I can actually save the changes to this view. And what that does is uh, that essentially means that when I share this URL now, everyone will see the same thing. So if we want to always use this as a board, um, we can save that as a view and we can share that around and everyone will see this as a board rather than as a table. Okay, so that's one way that we can work. And it's a kind of a very simple way where we're just kind of bringing items in um, and prioritizing them on the fly. Another really popular way to work is thinking about iterations. So if, for example, you've used Scrum as a methodology or something similar to that, 
you'll be familiar with this idea of setting like a sprint, which is essentially a time box where we say we have this bigger objective of work that we're trying to hit. And in order to get there, we're going to break things up into these small deliverables of maybe one week, maybe two weeks. Um, we're going to do some kind of prioritization exercise on a regular basis where we decide what we're going to achieve during that time box. Um, and then we're going to execute on it. And we're just going to kind of keep doing that until we hit the goals that we've set. So let's have a look about how we can do that here. So I'm gonna come back to that single select primitive. Let me create a new field here. Let's call this single select. And then um, one of the nice things here is that you can kind of call this whatever you want, depending on what your favorite terminology is. So the three I find are most popular. So sprints, obviously, is kind of a really popular one because of the Scrum methodology. Uh, but also I hear lots of teams call these cycles. Um, and I hear lots of teams call these iterations. Um, and I'm sure there'll be kind of like more that come up in the future. So it's really nice being able to just kind of customize this and call this exactly what you want. So just to keep this simple, I'm going to call this sprint. And then I'm going to be very unimaginative and I'm going to call this uh, sprint one, sprint two, and let's all go do a sprint three. And if I save that, I have my new field here, and I can come through and I can start to prioritize some stuff. So let's just say all these things that are merged in progress make sense for them to be in our sprint one. And then maybe we've got some things out here that we've already decided are in sprint two. And so we're starting to build up this idea of having this sprint information just encoded right here with the issues. And one of the things um, I'll jump in and say actually now, because it's a question that we get quite a lot, is around kind of where's this data stored and how else can we access it? So this data is part of the project. It is unique to the project but you can still access it. If I jump into one of these issues, um, you can actually still access it within the issue itself. So you'll see here on the sidebar, I actually have the priority field and I have the sprint field um, and we can kind of change these and set, set these right here. So if you're someone on a team who much prefers working in the issue, um, you can just still do that really easy to do um, and you don't have to get involved in the project stuff if you don't want to. Um, you can just kind of stay in the simplicity of the issue. So a um, couple of different options for how you want to work there. And the really nice thing is that this can be added to more than one project. So if there's a couple of teams, which we see quite a lot, right? There's an issue and there's more than one team that wants to work on it, kind of as a stakeholder in it. You can just add this to multiple projects and each team can keep an eye on it, but the issue itself is the source of truth for you. Right, so jumping back into this, so we're thinking the iterations, and I think one of the things we're thinking here is how do we turn this here into the planning center where we can do our planning for our sprints? So the best way that I know to do that is if I actually run a group by and I run that over the sprint. So I think that gives us this really nice, almost kind of like sprint planning style view here where we can kind of look at these. We can see really easy at a glance. We've got five issues in here and we can actually just drag and drop between these. So I can look down here. I can see, okay, here's an important item that's in the backlog. So actually, I'm just going to drag and drop that and I'm going to move it up. And then maybe here we can say, oh, actually, Here's, this one is a priority high. Why is it not in here? Kind of, we actually have some items that are kind of like lesser priority than that. Maybe we feel like we still have capacity. Let's move this one up. We'll drop that in here. And maybe like, we'll take this one and in return, we'll kind of like drop it down and that one can go into our sprint too. So you get this like nice planning view. You can make those trade-offs. You can make those drag and drops. It makes it really easy to have that conversation um, with the team around what's important. But what about we want to switch gears into the actual iteration itself? 
So that's where the power of these views got come, come back. So I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call this, uh, let's call this planning. So that's our planning view. And then I'm going to save this so that all those modifiers that I've applied to this. So think of things like which columns are visible. Is it a table or a board? Is there a group by so applied? Is there a sort applied? All those modifiers get saved into the view so that as I share around this URL, everyone sees that same set of information. So it's kind of like curated essentially um, so that you can make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. And then I'm gonna duplicate this and I'll get, what I'll get there is a second tab. And for this one, we're gonna do something a bit different. So I'm gonna call this one Comet Sprint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually run a filter. So if I search for Sprint, I'll get a nice little autocomplete here and I can set that to Sprint 1. And then we can say, okay, great. This has all kind of trimmed down into just the items that are in my first sprint. Maybe not the most useful thing now to look at it in this group by. So actually, why don't we transfer this over? Let's switch this over to a board. And then we're gonna save that. And now we have this great link of the uh, <clears throat> Octo and Raiders team that we can share around. And anyone who comes in here, um, they're gonna be able to see both these tabs and they're gonna be able to know, okay, Here's where the team does their, their planning, kind of we can see what they're working on right now. We can see what they're working on coming up soon. And we can see a bit about their backlog. And then over here, we can kind of come in and this is where the team are focused on day-to-day -day execution. This is where when they're doing their stand-ups, um, they're kind of like using this to walk through the board and have those conversations um, and see how that's going. One of the things here I do want to highlight um, that we're working on right now is actually getting in the custom fields to the board. One of the things you'll, you'll notice is that when I look here, I have like my urgent, but I don't have it over here. Um, give us another week and you'll have that. Um, <laughs> we'll be able to kind of bring those custom fields through. Um, that one is, is literally going through the release motions as we speak. Cool, well, I'm just gonna really quickly pause there to see if there's any questions coming in before I move on to the next one where I'm gonna talk a bit about epic tracking and how to build a bird's eye view. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna do a quick pause and see if there's anything coming in. Okay, well, let's keep going then. So, Let's talk about this one. So this is a really fun use case because I think what we just looked at with the Kanban flow and with the iteration flow, we got a slightly unique take on that, uh, but they're things that a lot of teams are already doing. So a lot of teams are already working in that way. And I think we've just given teams a much faster way of doing that, the way it's closer to the code. But thinking of how we give teams a bird's eye view of what's happening, um, I think that's a really an unsolved problem for a lot of teams. So I'm gonna talk you through how we do that here and how we've been able to really adapt our process using these new projects. Um, and in my opinion, make it 10 times better. So uh, what I'm gonna do, let me quickly give this project a name. Um, and this is, this is essentially the blank slate view here. So this is what a project looks like the first time you create one. Um, let's call this roadmap. And then I'm gonna come in here. The way that I add issues to a project, um, I can add issues, I can add PRs, and I can also add draft issues. So a draft issue is, is literally kind of just a piece of text like that. Um, and then if I have that, um, I can actually just kind of convert that to an issue. Um, really kind of easy. So if I just kind of... Uh, on a demo repo and just like that, I've kind of converted that into an issue. So that's a really nice way of kind of starting to populate these. If you're starting from scratch and you want a fast way to workflow uh, information into a project, you can kind of just create a bunch of those draft issues. And then when you're ready, convert them into actual issues. But for now, I'm going to get rid of that one. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search here uh, in that same demo repo. And what I did earlier is I made a bunch of these uh, what I call tracking issues. So I'm going to add all of these tracking issues into this roadmap. That's all of them, and that one managed to sneak back in. So let me just delete that one. So what we do is we use this uh, this kind of concept of tracking issue. It's kind of like an epic. Um, I've kind of used that terminology in the past, and I know lots of teams use that terminology of epic. This idea that here's a big kind of initiative slash big issue. Maybe it's the deliverable of the thing that actually goes out to the end user, or when we're ready to release it. Um, we think of it as about four to six weeks worth of work. So in order to kind of help teams stay focused and to have an idea of the bigger picture, we'd like to bundle these things up into about four to six weeks. And so if, for example, we open up one of these, um, let's have a look in this one see this good example so do something like, like this where we use the task lists and the checkbox um, in order to break this work down um, and to allow people to come into the actual issue and see what the details are um, and then you can kind of start to traverse traverse this right so think of this as a graph that you're able to traverse and i can kind of come in here see the details and then i can kind of walk back up that, that graph and find out kind of like what that parent issue is. So this is this, this kind of unit of work that is around that four to six weeks that we're gonna to use to build out our roadmap. So let's think of this in terms of our status. So I'm gonna change the default status a bit. So I'm gonna head into the setting screen here. And this idea of to do in progress done, um, it's little, not quite what we uh, we want for our backlog. So let me just edit all of these. Um, first one, let's do, let's do a backlog. But then the way we think of things is when they move out of the backlog, we think of the backlog as being the queue of work uh, where we're not really touching it right now. When things come out of the backlog, they go into what we call uh, shaping. So let's add that one in. Shaping is where we kind of really start to figure out the details um, of things. So lots of product work, lots of design work, lots of engineering work. Maybe we're building some prototypes. Maybe we're writing some ADRs. Um, it's at that point that we're really refining what's the scope of this going to be and do we have everything that we need to really figure that out. After shaping, we move into um, in progress um, and then finally uh, we do we do done so let me just save those options and then I'm going to head back to my roadmap and let's start to add some of these in so Let's see, we'll just randomly, I think, pick some here. I think some of that should make sense for us. I'm gonna make sure that everything here has an assignee because what we want to do is make sure that there's a key person attached to each of these. So that just makes it really easy to know who's the point person for this. And if I have questions, who should I go and speak to? So let's just randomly create some notifications for some people. People that I know won't mind. We 
we go. So now everything has an attached point person. And then there's one more field that I want to kind of create here that's a single select. And that is progress. And this is where we're going to be communicating how these are doing. And if there's anything that kind of like the team should be worried about or kind of actioning. So an example of something in the progress bucket here would be uh, would be blocked. So let's create that. Um, at risk is another one. If everything's going well, maybe we just have a nice green dot and we'll call that on track. Personally, like the rocket emoji for shipped, so we'll use that. And then finally, we have paused. So we can now see here, cool, let's start marking some of these up. We'll put that one at risk. This is on track. Maybe some of these things are paused. And then this last one, we've got that closed, that's done. So we'll mark that one as shipped. And then, so again, we're starting to build this out. We're starting to bring in the information that the team care about. Um, and then we start to craft the view so that it's easy to consume. So uh, the nice way to do that, I'm going to come back to my old friend, the group by. Um, I am going to group this by status. And then this gives us kind of a nice way to see this. So I could actually just even collapse the backlog to make this even clearer, help me zoom in on just the things that are shaping and progress done. But this is really nice, helps me come in and I can see, okay, there's actually some actions we need to do here. We've got some work at risk, we've got some work, work blocked. Maybe we care about dates, right? So let me actually add in one extra one here. I can add in a, uh, a new field, which is a date. And so a date that I know a lot of people care about um, are things like projected ship date. When are we actually gonna be releasing this to people? I know that's an important one. Uh, maybe we also care about a date like uh, started date. When did we actually start work on this item? I know that's another kind of important one. And so as we come into this, really easy, we can just start picking this date. So projected ship date, let's say that one's going out early September. We'll do a Friday release, we're feeling brave. This one's going out then. Maybe this one, that one's blocked. So maybe we're actually looking much later for that one. We'll put that one into October. And then we can kind of fill out these start dates to get a complete picture of when did we start this work. And just do those simple sums in our head um, then of how long is that work taking um, and how much time if we want, do we want to invest in it? So I think what we end up here then, is, again, it's like really customizable um, set to the team and really easy for the team to change this. If they decide that they're not really using um, the projected ship date, or maybe the start date doesn't matter to them for some some reason. Really easy just to get get rid of it. Um, you can just kind of go in here and just actually kind of like hide this. Or I could even delete it, um, and then I've kind of customized uh, what I'm after again. And we can also create different views here. So if I Duplicate this one out. I can do things like um, I can say progress blocked. And then here's a new one for you that you might not have seen yet because we recently shipped this one. I can actually use a comma to do an or. Um, so I can do, uh, I can do, actually, no, I can't do that here. I'm not going to do that because the emoji breaks that. So we're going to fix that for you. Uh, but if it didn't have the emoji there, you'd be able to do a comma um, and then be able to kind of like add in a second one. So let me just 
get rid of that. Let's try it live. Maybe this will work. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Um, so I can have a uh, an or here. So show me everything that is blocked or at risk. So uh, let's call this needs attention. This is our roadmap. And again, we can kind of just keep going here. So I'll kind of like uh, leave, leave leave you with this as it is, but um, we can kind of build out these different views and we can start to kind of like customize this. And it just becomes something that is really kind of set to the team. Um, cool. Okay, so I think we're in a pretty good spot there. Um, I think I've shown you a lot of the functionality that we have so far in uh, beta. I've shown you a few different ways that we can use it. Uh, we've talked a bit about how we do a really simple Kanban flow. We've talked a bit about how we can use the new project to run iterations. And we've also looked at how we can take that step up um, and look at things from a kind of more high level view. And we can create this bird's eye view of the roadmap that is really easy to share and kind of keep updated um, between the teams. So uh, happy to take any questions if there are any. Um, so let me just pause for a moment and see if there's any questions coming in. So here's a question um, from Brian Patrick. Will this support a Gantt view based on dates? Um, yes, I very much hope so. I mean, that's definitely one of the primitives that we want to be introducing here that I think will be really cool. Um, so as we think about these layout primitives, you know, we've got this layout, the table, we've got the layout, the board. I would love to see us expand this in the future. Gantt is definitely the number one request we get for that. Um, I often hear it referred to as the timeline view. I think that's maybe, uh, the uh, the favored way of saying kind of Gantt chart the, these days. So we might call it a timeline, um, but its purpose will be the same same uh, thing. So that's one that I'm kind of really looking forward to. Don't have a timeline for you on that one just yet, um, but that's definitely something to keep an eye out for in the future. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, this was really great. Um, I'm happy to stick around in, in the chat and kind of uh, answer any further questions you have. So I'll do that. Um, but my takeaway for you all is you liked what you, what you saw. If you thought this was going to be useful, um, then come, come along, sign up for the beta, let us know your organization, and we'll get you added. It'd be great to get your feedback um, and let us share what we've been building with you. Hey, okay. thanks, everyone.